Good morning, campers. Welcome back to Maker Camp Day Two. Today we're joined with uh, by Breck Baldwin and Andrew Woodbridge of Brooklyn Aerodrome. Also, we've got our counselors Rahid and Nick. Uh, yeah. So we're going to talk today with Andrew and Brooke about a couple of really interesting projects. I'm going to hand it off to uh, Breck and Andrew over in New York. Hey guys, um, Hi. I'm Breck. I'm Andrew. And uh, we're from the Brooklyn Aerodrome, and we make things fly. And uh, nice. people, we make things that you build fly as opposed to getting something out of a box, out of a Walmart or something. And uh, we're going to focus today on just doing um, gliders um, as part of a way to learn about basic aerodynamics. So what are we going to cover on the gliders? Uh, we're going to cover making the gliders and, and making them customized. So you guys can make any shape you want, everything from an animal to a crown to a regular airplane shape. So you guys can try new stuff out and see what you uh, can figure out. Very so, cool. Before we go into it, you want to talk a little bit about uh, Brooklyn Aerodrome and your projects there? Sure. So um, Brooklyn Aerodrome started as a, actually as an art project where I wanted to have um, 50 night flying airplanes. I'll show you one. Um, we don't have very good light here. Cool. I can't turn the lights out, but this was a flying firefly that illuminates nice. on the bottom. You can see this pattern here, I think. Well, let's see if I can get that right. Very cool. Can you see it a little bit? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty bright in here. This illuminates, and what I wanted to do is have 50 of airplanes kind of made up like this flying in a confined space at the same time for sort of an above ground aquarium effect. And that art project uh, unfortunately completely failed because um, I couldn't get 50 people to do it, but it did force me to come up with uh, a design, which is this one, which is now known as a flak, um, it, which is a very easy to build, very a very tough airplane um, that was featured on, uh, that ended up uh, thousands, uh, probably about a thousand of these have been built at this point, um, in part thanks to Make Magazine, Volume 30 cover story. Awesome, very guys, cool. thanks. And, um, and this is kind of where you can end up if you master the gliders, learn about the aerodynamics, and we'd like to see you build these and send them to us, but that's, that's kind of how we got uh, the, you know, our claim to fame in terms of make. And then we decided we wanted to try to educate people, and that's where Andrew comes in. So right, cool. from that, we came up with an education curriculum that's going to start with something simple like these foam gliders, and it's going to wind up with students designing and building their own full-scale uh, powered RC planes. So kind of the, the transition between something really easy where you can spend some time learning and experimenting to something that is a lot more fun and cool once you get that. Very cool. Can you show us a little bit about the flak and kind of how it works? Oh, sure. Um, so this is uh, the flak here. And um, let's take a quick look. We're going to power it up. Power this up. All right. So let's just do the fun part, which is... This is, um, let's see, which camera nice. are we in? This one right here? All right, I'm showing you the Elvons. Now let's hope. I'll just run cool. up. That's got a lot of power. It's probably almost yeah. thrust coming off of this little motor. And what we have here are Elvons. And everybody can guess. The Elvons go up like yeah. this. What's the airplane going to do? Go up. It goes like this. Yeah. going to go down. It goes like yeah. this. It's going to roll this way. It goes like this. It rolls that way. That's how we control this. Yeah. Controlling those Does that circles. have a rudder at all? Have what, sorry? A rudder? No rudder. It has fixed stabilizers that um, coordinate the turn in this in this dimension in yaw. Interesting. Maybe we can see a close up of those uh, those back control portions. You want to see the let's see. Yeah. There you go. So I'll I'll, I'll give you the guided tour with a um yeah. thing I've got. Okay. So there's a servo right here, okay? And that servo connects by a coat hanger to an Elvon control horn, which is made out of a little bit of a coroplast, a little recycled no parking sign. You can see the nice. recycled no parking sign here. Very and, cool. And then upcycling. Uh, Sorry? Upcycling. <laughs> upcycling, exactly. And it's uh, called go. air cycling, actually. There you uh, go. <laughs> Perfect. This servo is just as a speed controller, which is connected to with his battery. And this takes energy and runs the whole. This is the receiver, and that's the antenna for the receiver. And both servos connect here. Here's a little motor mount made out of some recycled. Um, actually, this is trash picked um, um, angle iron, but we made them out of old ladders and stuff like that. There's uh, here's the motor, wonderful brushless motor. It's very powerful and a prop, and a bunch of zip ties. And that's about it. You can build this thing in a couple of afternoons, folks. It's a great summer project. Um, and if you want to get plans and parts and information, um, our website's got everything you need. Um, Brooklyn nice. Great. Great. And do they have kits too? Or is... 
Yep, there's kits in the Maker Shed. Um, cool. There's a book actually on how to build it if you don't want to do vinyl. Oh wow! So here it is. That's cool. uh, you can get that. It's about 16 bucks at Amazon, but everything's on the website to figure it out. Maker Shed sells kits. There's uh, and uh, come fly with us if you're in Brooklyn and send us a picture for sure of whatever nice. you create. Great, cool. Well, um, should we take it into today's project? Sure. Um, so basically, this is built around a piece of foam. And the best place we found to get the foam was to go to the grocery store and ask for some meat trays. They will give them to you. They're pretty nice about it, usually. So you get a couple of just foam meat trays, and you want to cut this band off, the, the ridge portion of that off, just so you wind up with something that's just a, a flat square. So this is going to be your canvas to build your plane. All right. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a plane really, really fast, all right? Just okay. just. Hey, it, look, it actually looks like, uh, looks like Lucas joined us. Is that Lucas? Lucas, can you hear us? All right, I guess not. Sorry about that. We can continue with the project there. OK. So we're going to build this airplane. So we've got this little bit of foam here. And I'm just going to go what we, to make what we call a plank. And the way the plank or oh, wait. The first thing we're doing is we're going to learn something. And this is going oh. to be um, a lesson in center of gravity. It turns out it's pretty easy to get lift. Um, one of the hard things about airplanes is controlling them. And the center of gravity is one of the key portions of making an airplane fly level so it doesn't go up or down or anything like that. So if we take an airplane like this and we uh, try to fly it, just this shape right here, and we, I just drop it, it just kind of doesn't do a whole lot of flying. It's just kind of acting like a, like a little something in the wind, right? And um, what we want to do is actually have it do some flying for us, and how are we going to make it do that? Because this guy right here, Warning, I'm about to give it a huck. Why does this do so much better? So if I try this, so we'll try to fly this one. Yeah, let's try to fly. Here we go. Ready? We're launching. Well, that didn't fly. That is tough. Right. Oh, yeah. That was, that was so bad. I have to do it again. I didn't expect it to even fly. There we go. Okay. That's definitely leaf and wind. Nothing really happening there. As opposed to when I do this, I've added a vertical stabilizer. It's actually not important, so just let's not distract you with that. So now I'm going to fly it. And you see, that's actually kind of flying, right? So um, it's the vertical stabilizer, and then let me add that, which is a playing card or Metro subway card or whatever you have around. Yeah. Very cool. And then you give it a hop, and that's flying good. Okay, so we are going to go into why that matters. How do we change that airplane to um, make it fly that well? Um, we obviously added a, a playing card, but that's not the dimension we're going to talk about right now. We're going to talk about center of gravity. So as an illustration of how center of gravity works, we're going to think about a wind vane. And wind vanes, uh, this is, you have two, I have a pivot point here. I just, I just taped a uh, stirrer on here. And I want to have this thing go into the wind, all right? And if we go like this, boy, that's a really bad wind vane. That is not doing anything useful at all. It's going uh, perpendicular to the direction of the wind, all right? So think about how you might fix that problem. There's two solutions, and they're basically the same solution. One solution is to, so in terms of flying, what we're asking the question is, is can we get this thing to be level like this, and it's just not going to do it. This is, right. this is what's happening when we try to fly this thing. All right, one solution is try and put more surface area to the aft of this hinge point. And we can do that by changing what the hinge point is. And what we've done is I've taken, these are all equal rectangles, so there's um, three quarters of the surface area is aft of this bearing, which is where my little wind vane bearing is, and 25% is in front. And it turns out just empirically, that's been a very good place to have what we call the center of gravity, or in this case, the bearing for a wind vane. And so now we do it, and that's a great wind vane now. That's going to point straight. Yeah, through. huge right? difference. See that? All right. Yeah. We can do it another way, which is keep the bearing where it was before, which is in the middle, in the middle here, but take away a bunch of surface area in front of it. And notice that we have these equally sized squares, one, two, three, four of them. One of them, one of them is in the front. That's 25% of the surface area. And 75% is back here, about 100% total. All right? And to see how good a wind vane that is. It's quite a good wind vane. Yeah. All right. So we know how to make a wind vane work by increasing surface area after the bearing. Now, when we're flying airplanes, we don't actually have a bearing. What we have is um, mass. And the way we do that is we say, OK, I want to have this. What is the balance point with respect? The center of gravity is the balance point um, in all dimensions, but only, we're going to only worry about four and a half. 
that the aircraft balances naturally, okay? And that is for this airplane, for this one, because that's no weights on it except some soda straws, it's at the 50% point. You can make yourself a nice tool to do this. Um, so I just took a coat hanger and did a little bending. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the idea. And we're just going to rest this until it indicates what the center of gravity is. And if you look around, you have to look around a little bit down on the bottom, and you'll see that yeah. it'll help you figure out what center of gravity is. Okay? Very so, nice. so, sorry, questions? Uh, nope. Counselors, Nick and Rahid, do you have any questions for us so far? No. Um, yeah, no. Cool. Yeah. Okay. okay for, so for those of who, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, we're joined by Breck Baldwin and Andrew Woodbridge from Brooklyn Aerodrome, as well as our counselors Nick and Rahid. And uh, Lucas, is it, can yeah, you hear I'm us? Here here? Now. Great. Yeah, awesome. This is uh, this is Lucas Weekly. He's uh, part of our uh, Maker Hanger series. He's going to be hosting that. You should check that out, and I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, hello. How are you doing, Lucas? Good. How are you? Good, good, great. We're, uh, we're just midway through our project here. Uh, I think we're going to hand it back yeah. to uh, Breck. OK. So hello, Lucas. Um, so we're going over center of gravity um, um, uh, changes. We're going to make a plank that's not flying well because the center of gravity is not where it needs to be. We just demonstrated how um, the bearing on a wind vane, if it's at a 25% um, cord point, cord is the, the measure um, in, uh, perpendicular to, no, sorry, uh, parallel to the direction of flight. Um, if you have 25% uh, of the surface area ahead of um, what is effectively the bearing um, and 75% aft, you get a very nice wind vane. We're going to do the same thing except we're going to have the center of gravity be adjusted. So here we have our plank from before and I've drawn in the lines and we want to have this thing, it's balancing about right here at the 50% point, we want to have it balance here. How are we going to do that? Any guesses? Money. That's right. Nice. Reach into your pocket, start pulling out quarters, guys. This airplane is, just because I've built it so many times, is between 75 cents and 85 cents worth of nose weight is required. So in the form of three quarters, either a nickel or a dime. I'm going for the 80 cent model because I'm going to save myself a nickel and I'm nice. feeling lucky. All right? We take some tape that's ready to go and just tape this on the front edge. There's a video on the site on how to do this plus instructions. Okay, and you tape this as, as close to the front edge as you can. You don't. You can have it stick out if you want, but then you have to recalculate what the CG is. All right, I'm gonna put that piece of tape there. Put this on top of it. Another piece of tape, and then one more. Oops. Yeah, all right. That'll work. Now we go to the backup stunt plane. It's already got this one built, and then we add one more bit. Okay, now let's see what the CG is now. Look at that. That's awesome. So wow. we've you know, moved it forward. So effectively what you have now is the bearing for this thing when it's moving through the air has moved from being way back here where it didn't want to fly at all. Hopefully when it's up here, it'll want to fly. All right? And we'll do one more thing. We're going to add a vert. Well, we'll fly it like this. All right. So okay. you want to do the honors, Andrew? Sure. sure. Fly it. Okay. So um, we find a couple different ways to fly this. One is to use two hands over your head. You can see me in one of the pictures on the other you there. Yeah. The other way is to um, use your hands and give it a flick like this. So I'm just going to give it a flick. <laughs> nice. It Not bad. Not it. bad. It didn't go straight. It was something. <laughs> and launching is hard. And so I'm a little more experienced on launching. Let's see if I can get a better flight out of it. All right. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. Sorry, Andrew. I set you up for failure there. Um, it's an aerodynamically important thing that we need to add what's called reflex. And the way I'm going to add this reflex is I'm going to take a ruler and I'm just going to bend it up at the rear edge. And what we saw there was wow. the fact that there wasn't reflex, which helps keep, keep the nose up. We saw how that up, when we up commanded up um, on the RC airplane, everybody said, yeah, it's going to go up. So, Andrew, here, I'll give you a sport. Okay. Oh, so now you have a cheat. So now if you look at the edge, you can see that the edge is bent up just a little bit in the back. So that should have an impact on you. that does. There you go. That's okay. awesome. Wow, nice. Very All right. cool. And then we have one more change to make, and we will have built ourselves our first glider. And that is we want to take the midpoint of this thing. And this is not particularly precise work. We just want to have some fun. And games, and just cut it. And the great thing about using this foam is that it is cheap. And if you make a mistake, 
it really doesn't matter. And we're just going to take a playing card. So six of hearts. Feeling lucky here. Yeah, and so what's the material there, Breck? Which, the foam? The foam, yeah. So the foam, once again, uh, we just asked for some meat trays from the uh, local grocery store. Okay. We just cut the edge off so we have a, a flat piece of foam that we can start with. Um, you okay. need some tape, you need the coins, you need a playing card or a subway metro card, something like that. Um, okay. And I think that's everything you need, right? Pocket Pretty much, and a ruler. Yeah. And, and you could use uh, scissors to cut this out if you don't want to deal with uh, razor knives. So we'll try to fly this one again. You guys ready? Launching. Ah, that flies nice. All right. Beautiful. So that's an airplane. So let's just take a quick look at our other airplane that was sort of similar, which was the one that was, uh, oops, where is it? Uh-oh. Oh, no, it's right here. Okay. Uh, I need a playing card, though. Ah. All right. Lady Luck gives us a queen of spades. There we go. And so this is our different approach to the center of gravity, which is what we did is we said we're going to we're going to cut this surface area out, right, and have the center of gravity still be where it was before, but we're right. reducing the uh, surface area in front of it. And you'll notice that it basically, it's a little nose heavy, because I think that, let me get that one. All right, so that's basically balancing on that front edge. Sometimes you have to add a little more nose weight, a little less, but this is just, this is just you know, historically has worked out real well as a place to put the um, center of gravity for reasons that uh, we Very can't nice. get into. Does this model also require the relief? Uh, yeah, that all of them will have a little bit of uptrim, a little bit of reflex. Um, reflex, that reflex, that's what it is. Pardon? Reflex, sorry, I called it relief. Reflex. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like keeping things with. So let's get this one a hug. Ah, that's why it's so nice. All right, so, so we've seen both of those work, and we have a basic idea of the role of center of gravity and the pitch stability of um, a glider. So um, from there, it's probably a good time for uh, any questions that you might have and also a, a time check on you guys. Andrew, right now, while we're discussing whatever we're discussing right now, is going to make a weird shape. So you just want to take them through, and then we can talk yeah. about anything. So else um, we started. Oh, do you have any quick questions here while I start drawing? Yeah, counselors, do you have any uh, questions for... Rick and or Breck and Andrew, any questions, counselors? I guess not. But I have a few questions. Um, you know, I'm, you can you can use that. F Nick, go ahead. There is a one question from the audience. Would oh, you like okay. to hear? Yeah, absolutely, please. Yeah, uh, Kyle asks, can anyone join the Brooklyn Airdrome? He loves rockets and he wants to get involved. Yep. Anyone, we have a, there's a website that has forum software. We have a forum situation, so if you're in, uh, I think you can log in with Google Plus or uh, using your Google account, and you can ask questions there, and we have a special uh, page for the um, Make Camp. Just go to our home page, and you'll see Make Camp, and on there is the, the first post on the forum is um, how to make that plank glider I just made, um, plus instructions, and then some instructions on how to tune it to make it fly better. And then it's a great place to ask questions. You have to join to be able to post, but it's trivial to join. Gotcha. Great. Okay. Great. Uh, Andrew, you want to continue? Okay. So um, you start with a square and you figure out that and get that working. And when that works for you, then you can try some more advanced stuff. So the trick here is if you notice here, you have a little, I believe this is a two inch piece at the top here. Um, that way you guys can see that. Uh, this will help make right. sure oh, okay. if you leave most of this there it'll probably fly. That's kind of your, your safety net. So as long as you have that two-inch band or most of this two-inch band still... It's like it's a little washed out. You guys see it? Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So as long as you have that two-inch band, that's probably going to set you up for success. So I'm going to try making a fish. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try doing a, a little body here, and it gets a, like, a little wavy tail. So what I'm other just... shapes have you tried besides oh. fish? Wow. So he's going to... All right, so I'll take you through some of the other shapes. We have a tasty, tasty banana wow. right here. And um, so as we do, this is how we build our art planes, is we generally make a glider um, out of foam that's about half the size than we, that we expect the finished airplane to be. And this is... Um, and so this banana was the shape. Um, an artist came and worked with us and wanted a banana in the sky. This is one of our, our, one of our uh, most popular... Um, uh, airplanes is a flying banana. I didn't bring it because we just didn't have to. But that must have been yeah. tough to balance. Um, yeah, what you do is you, you you can try to. There's a couple of ways you can get the balance. One is um, try to figure out the 25% um, surface area point on the the glider, and you can see where this thing is balancing right now. That's right 
between my thumbs looks to be a, that looks believably about 25% of the surface area. You can try to figure that out ahead of time, balance it on that point, and see if it flies. The other thing you can do is you can just huck it and you say, okay, do I need more right. or not? So this one's fun a ton, but we'll give it a huck just to prove to you that it flies. It's got two um, metro cards as, as stabilizers. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that flies. Wow. Out. Isn't that great? That, one, that flies great. So here's a weird one. This is a carrot. And uh, it's asymmetric because it's uh, carrots don't really have a good direction of flight. And uh, this is built twice the size as well. And uh, so this was the prototype for building the carrot. And uh, I'll give this a throw as well. So here's the carrot. One. <laughs> it's a little tucky. I'll try that again. So I'm half done here. Yeah, half done. Half done cool. with the fish. The best thing about building gliders this way is you don't mind failing. You're just like, oh, all right, that just took you 15 minutes to do. Now I'll try yeah. something else. And, you know, totally. so fun. And then you, just, you figure out weird shapes. Who would think a carrot would fly, right? Oh, I need yeah. something to get the fly. But it's like, there we go. Woo! That's Stop. great. Um, cool. And you can do weird shapes like this, like an ice cream cone. You know, this, is, <laughs> this nice. flies asymmetrically. Let's see if we can get it to go. I didn't actually test fly this one. So oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> and so here's our ice cream cone. It's going to fly uh, in the direction of flight. It's going to be chunk this edge on. And uh, you can see the 25, it looks like this is a 50 cents balancing job. Uh, and some foreign currency, some Canadian currency. All right, here we go. Oop. Oop. <laughs> a little tucky. Anyway, yeah. oh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Yeah, no, that's part of the process, right? Yeah, the, the whole fun. fun of this is just being able to uh, to get out there and try. I'm going to switch over to the knife here to get yeah. that little inside piece. But yeah, scissors work fine. Knife works fine. Um, you get the little bit lighter weight meat trays, the scissors will be a little easier. Just depends on what you can get your hands on. Um, also, if there's a construction project in the area and they have some leftover foam from that, that also works. The blue foam that we that's a common material cool. that we use a lot. So there we go. So here's my fish. Kind of looks like a a, a betta fish there. Awesome. Um, and again, we're going to look for that balance point. And uh, right now, let's see where it's where's the balance. It's probably back. So here. you're just using your fingers and kind of seeing how it balances and trying okay. to offset that so it is balanced. So it, the center of gravity right now is way back here because that, of that big tail. So we're going to want to add so some money is called for here. Yeah. How about, I don't know, I'm guessing, let's start with a penny. All right, and use some tape. Where's the tape? Right here. There you go. So, okay. And don't forget you can decorate these. Markers will work just fine with this so you guys can. And you want to put a slit in there for a yep. playing card? That's but that's okay. Right. Well, let's just see if that Do you guys have a second to answer a, a couple of questions? Go for it. Yeah. All right. Uh, what does Huck mean? <laughs> Huck is uh, how I, and probably almost only I, um, uh, that's grammatical even, uh, <laughs> launch an airplane. So a Huck is just kind of let's go out and throw it and see what happens. Launch it. Put it in the air. And uh, and it's uh, you know it's, it's it's meant to reduce anxiety and stress on on uh, prototypes being launched the first time. Say I'm just going to give it a huck, kind of relax a little bit inside. Yeah. Uh, see what happens. That's part of the fun, right? Yeah. Okay. Can okay. Give it a huck. Yeah. Let's see what happens. That one's so bad. Okay. Good. Yeah, that one's so bad. But I didn't put the the reflex in the tail. So um, let's uh let's pick that up. Let me grab the ruler here. And same thing, we're just going to, you know, give this a little bit of, let's put the ruler on it and fold it right along that ruler edge. I'll give you a nice, that can be. Yeah. Let's see. All right. If I'm staying here, I'll give it a hug. Try it again. Somebody else wants to know, all right, did you guys go to school for this? Or, um, or did you <laughs> well, just pick um, this up on your own? I'll go How'd first. you get into it? I'm a high school teacher. I teach high school computer science. I teach uh, Android app design and database classes. And uh, I met up with Brooklyn Aerodrome, and we had fun. So I started to uh, work with them on making this type of curriculum available to students in schools. Yeah, I have no formal training at all in aeronautics. I'm self-taught. I've been doing it since I was a kid. And uh, you know, I think I got a pretty good handle on it. I, the aerodynamics chapter in the book was actually vetted by a real aerodynamics professor, and he said, "Hey, oh, it's okay. It wasn't completely crazy." So. Um, gotcha. Well, I have some idea what I'm doing. I have a. I, I, I have. Yeah, no, I have no. Wow, look at fishy go. So actually, it, even though it's a really weird shape and it's not, you know, it took me a couple minutes to make, and you can try out this and then try something else and uh, have a lot of fun trying a bunch of different designs. Yeah. 
Um, oh, hey, the launcher. Right. How are we doing on time, guys? We're good. Yeah. Feel free to talk about anything you want. Okay. Uh, another thing that we also have, have experimented with is launching with rubber bands as opposed to using our hands. And uh, if you're doing some real experimenting and you want to do an actual trial, um, getting rid of the throwing um, variable will help you get a better result for ex experimentation. So uh, we usually will make a little hook out of a state out of a uh, sorry out of a paper clip. To take the paper clip, oops, come right now here and take the paper clip and fold it in half so that the um, you have the piece that you have a little hook at the bottom. Yeah, let's try to get my hand out of the way. Nice. Can you guys see the little hook there? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So we'll just take the little hook on the bottom, and uh, that will allow us to hook it onto a rubber band for launching. Ooh. More speed, longer flights, huh? Cool. Yep. And also like more that. control. What? So oh, really? Oh, consistency. Like I said, if you, you want to do some real experimentation and, and actually keep track of your data and get good results and compare, um, the a rubber band will help you be more consistent with that because you can pull it back the same amount each time. Yeah. So if you, you can, uh, this little hand launcher that we made is just a piece of plastic with a little brand on top. And uh, we'll just hook this on. So just hook the rubber band, you just hook the hook on the rubber band, and you just pull back and launch. There we go. <laughs> it's a little tuning, but like everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like we said, it's really about experimenting and, and just messing with them until they fly. Cool. That's now, a lot of the fun. The, the basic idea with these gliders is you take pretty much any material you, you can find cut a cool shape out, find the balance point, and mm -hmm. throw it. Yep. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just that's try the, it, right? Yep. That's, yeah, the, right. That's, the, that's the basic game. Now, what we may do, and if there's a request, we'll set up on our forums uh, maybe a little contest where um, we'll have a calibrated launcher, which is a launcher with a rubber band, and you calibrate it by having seeing how far it launches a weight. Um, and so everyone will have the same launcher, and we'll have a little competition on who can uh, Launch and glider the furthest, and who can carry um, the most weight over a, a, a certain amount of distance. And we awesome. can have all the summer camps compete with each other um, with a calibrated rubber launcher. Like that. There you go. What website should we check out to uh, to check out that contest? So that'll be uh, uh, BrooklynAirDrum.com. Go to the uh, uh, Make Camp link, and I'll put a forum. I'll start a forum there on um, a nationwide, worldwide. Galactic wide. Let's go. Galactic. For it. I like Galactic that. Competition for who can build the best foamy glider for uh, distance flown and for weight carrying over a particular distance. Like, you know, how far, how much weight can you carry 20 feet? All right? That's great. That off. And uh, if you live in the metro area and you're coming to Maker Fair in September, uh, bring your gliders. We'll have launchers set up there and we'll be helping people make. Uh, these exact type of gliders there. So that would be a great opportunity if you're at Maker Fair to, uh, in New York City to come try this stuff out. Yep. Come fly with us. We actually have pilot license. If you come, you'll get a glider license if you fly with us at our uh, at our tent at Maker Fair. Here, check this out. Oh, cool. We get a license, huh? Yeah. yeah. You got a, and uh, there's also a little uh, certificate. Uh, there you go. There's the prototype. This is, this is, we haven't printed them out yet, but this is what the pilot's license is going to look like. You get endorsements. And um, we'll be doing buddy boxing at Maker Fair as well, so that'll be cool. you'll be flying the flak, um, but it'll be student driving, so I'll give you control of parts of the airplane. You can fly it around, see if you can control it or not. And um, if you go and uh, go through the glider training and actually get a successfully build and fly glider, um, you get a session on the buddy box. So flying a full-on flak. Awesome, cool. Uh, counselors, do we have any questions? Um, somebody asked why the uh, square wings on one of them instead of the rounded wings, but that was just for experimentation, right? He's showing yeah. us the plug. It's quicker. <laughs> just quicker to build the plank. If they come in a square, it's quicker just to, to get the square flying. And if you want to, if we wanted around the corners, it would fly just as, just as well. Let's, let's find out. Well. You know. Yeah, this let's try. It. Did you sit there? I shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing this. So get yourself some foam, but I'll get you started. You guys kick us off whenever you want, but like, all right, so here's a question. You know, you've got, we now have a problem. We have, uh, we want to do a semicircle, let's say, and how are we going to um, figure out what a circle looks like in this, um, particularly without any Sharpies? So, um, I don't know, actually. Well, you know what? So what I did is I took my straw, and I'm just going to use it to help me. So, right there, and I know I'm going to keep it here, so I put it there, and I'm just going to rotate this around. 
and try to draw in a circle. I don't think that's going to quite work, but we'll start with that. So it might not quite be a perfect half circle. But well, it doesn't need to be, right? It doesn't. We're just having fun here. And yeah. if you uh, look around your house, you can probably find some, a big coffee can or something that's the right rounded shape that you want and just trace it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Maybe so. an upside down plate or something. Yeah, that would work too. Yeah. Or a bowl. So, lots of. You see my little dots that I just threw in there? And now I'm going to draw it in. And I'm a terrible drawer. And if you're into computers, uh, and this is a really good hint, and we I use it all the time, is SketchUp or some um, 3D uh, modeling software will really help you draw out nice shapes. Um, yeah, I can't, that, and that's, that's how a I, great idea. Because um, if you, yeah, sorry. If that's you, how I design my plans. If you do it in CAD, you just uh, or in SketchUp or even in in PowerPoint or whatever you have at home, you can yeah. just do it, print it out, tape it on, yeah. and then use that as a template to cut it out. That's a great idea. Yeah. So I would just do that. And now we don't know what the, where the center of gravity is going to be on. The, we don't know what the 25% chord point is. So we'll just take yeah. some. Just take so you can figure it out either experimentally, like he's doing right now, where you just mess with it until it works. Yeah. Or if you actually want to do the math behind it, you can uh, measure the shapes and actually calculate the area and figure out where one third of the, uh, sorry, one quarter of the area is versus the other three quarters. Yeah. Great. So this is perfect for beginning and advanced pilots, right? Yes. You go as far as you want with it. That's great. Yeah, when I build my fancy planes, I mean, people pay me money to build these airplanes. Um, I always start with a little foam glider like this. This has not left my, you know, um, standard operating procedure for building novel shapes. It's just so much, I'm so much more confident that the shape is going to fly if I built a small prototype glider. And I just sort of, it, keeps, it probably saves me, you know, crashing a huge amount just by getting it. So there's my little sort of, you know, rounded front edge, a little bit of reflex in the back. You can see it there again, and give it a hug. See what we got. Yep. All right. That's definitely doesn't have enough nose weight. You can just tell it's just going right. to be almost right. And so, so what happens and, when there's not enough weight in the front? Yep. What, what was the question? What happens when there's not enough weight in the front section? Well, you saw it spiral. Right. Um, that's a pretty good indication. But again, if, uh, if you go back to our our weather vane, that's what you need to uh, to help it uh, stay straight in the wind. Right, so that 25% percent yeah. balance there. Cool. That's a little better. Very nice. Uh, and if it's curving, always curving to the left to the right, you can adjust just one side or the other because there's a, it's cut here. So if it's turning one way, lifts. Um, if it's turning to the left, you want to pick up. Can you show us a, a close-up there, Andrew, of what you're doing? Okay, so um, if if you're throwing it and it's always curving off the same way, you would like to. So if this wing is going up, and this wing right. is going down. You want to to correct that a little bit. You want to get this wing to stay up or push this wing down. So a little bit of up reflex on the opposite side. If it's curving this way, you want to pick up a little bit on the opposite side. Gotcha. You just remember it. Um, now they're a little uneven. That'll help help it level out when it flies. Cool. Yeah, I saw the right turn them on. But. There you go. That's a perfect example. So just a little bit of correction there, and it'll help you straighten that right out. Yeah, so Great. So it was curving to when he he flew it. It was curving to the right, so he's picking up a little bit on the left yeah. side. You need to drop the side. That's if it's turning this way. You can either um, drop this side or raise this side. You may need to do both. You just kind of you kind of have to mess around with it and just try different stuff. So right now, if I'm looking at how much reflex I have, which is maybe just about, it looks like it's about a quarter, an eighth, of an, an eighth of an inch maybe. It doesn't need a whole lot, but yeah, just a tiny bit. It's probably hard to see with the camera. Oh, that's better. Oh, that, so, that's I great. Just did a little bit of that. You notice how it's you know, correcting itself. So that could maybe use a little more nose weight, I would think, because I'd like to fly, fly a little more straight. Cool. Hey, guys, Jade wants to know how the playing card helps. Is that for stability? Uh, it's for yaw stability. So let's fly. Let's take it off. Okay. So this playing card is gone. Let's see how it flies. Let's see how it kind of goes. I, I'm not going to be able to fly this airplane straight. All right. So this basically will help when the air is going over it. It helps keep it uh, in that same direction it's pointing. So um, with the playing card here, when the air is going to come, it's going to hit this and it's going to help straighten it out, like a rudder in a boat keeps it going straight. When the boat's going through the water, it's the same thing here. It's going to keep it 
in this line. Okay. Let's go back to our wind vane. All right. So if the center of gravity is about right here, so I'm just going to punch it through like that. There's nothing on in this situation here to keep this airplane uh, oriented in this dimension at all if this is a wind vane, remember? So right. what we do is we make it a really good wind vane by putting this huge stabilizer on the back. And that is now going to be a much better wind vane, all right? It's, it's, uh, the, the bearing's not quite right, but you kind of get the idea. So it's the same thing as the feathers on the back of an arrow or yep. um, the fins on a rocket or, you know, most right. things that fly have some sort of, of way to keep them flying straight. So it's serving Very that purpose. Cool. And they're cheap and easy to, get a, easy to get a hold of. So that's why we picked gotcha. a plant card or a subway card. Cool. Lucas, have you ever made any sort of gliders like these? Yeah, I have before, um, and I use quarters and other things oh. to weigh them down. Yeah, um, I have a question for you guys, actually. Have you ever played around with dihedral or anhedral? Um, yeah, there's, um, we tend not to use them on the flat plates, um, the flat plate airfoil airplanes that we have, uh, just because it's structurally it's a little bit challenging to... Um, have dihedral or uh, anhedral. Let's explain what it is first for um, folks yeah. that don't know what this is. So if we take, um, so here is uh, an airplane that we're flying. It has, notice that it is flat in this dimension. There's nothing going on. That has no dihedral or anhedral. Dihedral is if we bring up the, bring the wingtips up a little bit, and I'll put some dihedral on this just by bending it. It's not quite perfect just because, all right, now you can see it's got dihedral, that little, that little kick up. Now, this is a really interesting thing about stability. So um, free flight gliders and a lot of uh, full-scale aviation, you always see a little bit of uh, dihedral um, on the wings. And the reason is this, is that it, we want this airplane to be stable in roll. This is the roll direction of the airplane. I'm going to put the plane card back in just so we just absolutely know what we're talking about. So oops, there's the falling, falling apart <laughs> queen of clubs coming out. It's like that. And there's our dihedral is going to be flying this way, okay? So what happens is if there's a little bit of upset, if you think about it, this wing is actually perpendicular to gravity, and this wing is less perpendicular to gravity. So the lift force is kind of skewed off, and it's not as effective in generating lift. As, and this is flatter to the plane of gravity, and it's going to be generated. Its lift force is applying directly to the um, force of gravity. So this increased lift will tend to write itself. So this is, it'll go and oscillate just like this. It, it'll oh, wow. correct itself with that basic stability mechanism. So it's one oh, of the self things that makes airplanes um, um, uh, stable in flight. Now, anhedral is what happens if you do it the opposite way around. <laughs> okay? So um, an anhedral is used, um, it's destabilizing on the lifting surface like wings. So the reason it's destabilizing, think about it, if I roll a little bit this way, where am I getting more lift? I'm getting more lift here, and that's gonna. And where am I getting less lift here? So that's just gonna want to roll it more and more and more. Now here's a really cool thing. You'll see a lot on full scale aviation. The tail of a jetliner. Um, you're not always. You'll see dihedral on the tail too. But a lot. You will see with airplanes that have anhedral on their tail. And you're wondering why do they have anhedral on the tail? Isn't that destabilizing the airplane? And it's actually, it's not, because the t what the tail does um, on, uh, on airplanes is actually provide a downforce. And if you're providing a downforce, the lift vector is actually going up. And so if you go roll this way, that's actually stabilizing, because you're trying to, you're getting left. Um, this is, since we're trying to generate a force that's this way, this is now um, trying to downforce. Sorry, so we're trying to push it down. This is more effective at pushing down, and then it'll right itself. And if it's like this, this will be more effective at pushing down. It'll write itself that way. So anhedral and dihedral are very important to stability. Great question. But if you want to try that and experiment, you saw how easy it was to just put the ruler on and fold it, and then you can experiment that way too. So. And in the truth, cool. how we roll, we're going to actually give it a hug. So, yeah. There we go. I always so, Lucas, do, do like a score, questions? and then I. Yeah, with the dihedral. Um, I always do like a score with an X-Acto knife and then I bend it a little bit and put some hot glue inside of it and that normally works for me. Yeah. Um, nice. The anahedral, it's actually used in fighter jets as well. Yep. So, and then they have gyros that then the computers stabilize it so when they want to do rolls they can do it really quick. I mean it flies a little better with, an, uh, with dihedral in it. Yeah. So that's a great suggestion. Cool. Great. Uh, counselors, do we have any more questions? Yeah, we have a question from Kelly. Uh, 
Can cardboard work as well as foam? Uh, cardboard is pretty heavy. Um, I've been experimenting with cardboard a bunch. Um, great working material, and there's ton of, tons of it around. Um, try it. You know, um, it, it, what happens is, is that you want um, to get the lightest cardboard you can, and um, you also want to keep it dry. If it gets, if you land it, if you, if it gets wet at all, it just falls apart. Um, gotcha. You might also be able to um, laminate it with something else to get it, uh, keep it light and stiff. Um, so, you know, try it, see what goes on. Um, I think for you know this size glider, I think cardboard probably work just fine. They're just going to require a little more nose weight because there's more material to counteract. You would probably be better off if you build with cardboard, building shapes that are more like the like the RT glider here, because they require less nose weight to balance. So you'll end up putting a quarter or two on a piece of cardboard that looks like this instead of if you had a plank um, like this, you end up having to put you know a couple of dollars worth of quarters up here to have it balance, just because there's so much more weight back here in the form of the cardboard. So um, the shapes that you want to work with should be more like this, where you have a, an extended portion. It's triangle shapes, delta wings are good. Um, this is a good shape. Um, planks are not good. This is not good. You can see for why. Cardboard. Yeah, card, for cardboard. All right. Very cool. We have another question. Uh, all right. Why are all the gliders flat? Uh, um, they're flat because uh, we want to build quickly, and we're not trying to optimize uh, performance. Um, the next question is going to be how do we get lift off of a flat? You know, there's a big story out there about. Um, you have to have a curved shape in order to generate lift. Well, we're generating gobs of lift right now. We're flying airplanes, right? So there's lift coming off of this. And um, so let me give, let me tell you the lift story real quick, and then we'll, I'll talk about why we don't bother a little more. So think about this. This is um, if we have zero angle of attack, we're going like this in the air, right? This is this is not going to generate any lift. Anybody can just think about that, right? If you guys can see, all right. And then what, you know, so Mr. Air Molecule's here, and Ms. Air Molecule's here, and they get separated, and they kind of meet up over back here, okay? They go maybe a little disturbed by this rude airplane that came between them, right? So no lifts being generated. If we increase the angle of attack a little bit like this, and then Ms. Air Molecule and Mr. Air Molecule get separated again, not only Mr. Air Molecule kind of gets reflected off the bottom. He bounces off, and just like marbles off the bottom. And that's one component of lift. That just totally makes sense to everybody. It's just totally Newtonian kind of explanation. It's just doing, doing, doing. He's flying down there. Now, Ms. Air Molecule just skipped over the top here. What happens to her? Well, she doesn't have Mr. Air Molecule next to her anymore. And her choice is to either, if she goes straight, that means there's no air in this space here, no air at all in this sort of triangle is defined by this, this, I'm exaggerating, this, this angle of attack. What is she going to do? She's going to go down towards the, the vacuum that would be there otherwise. And there'll be, but she won't be able to fill it, fill it um, fully because all of these Mr. Air molecules are being reflected off the bottom. So there'll be less pressure here as she sort of tries to go down into there. Um, there another way to think about it is that the vacuum is accelerating it these air molecules down like a roller coaster. Except it's not gravity, it's, it's, it's the absence of um, air. It's a vacuum that's pulling them down. And that generates a sucking up force, a less pressure. And there's increased pressure from down here, less pressure up here, and that's the second component of lift. All right, what does curving an airfoil do? Curving means doing something like that. It makes that whole process more efficient. You can think about it, Mr. Air Molecule is going to get kicked down a little more smoothly. He's kind of, you know, instead of being whacked, he's being gently coerced down. And Ms. Air Molecule has an easier time staying attached or close to the top surface so it's less turbulated and it's just, it, there's less violence done to the airflow and that's more efficient. And then there's less drag. The other force that happens as we're generating lifts is we have drag, which is slowing us down constantly. So that's what camber gives you, or the, a curve in the airflow. It makes that whole process more efficient. But the same thing's going on with flat plates. Um, they're just not as efficient as these. So if you want to make a really good glider out of this, what you do is you probably give it a little bit of camber like this, a little bit of bend, not very much because we're not going very fast. You might want to sand these leading edges to be nice and smooth so they kind of ease that transition of air over, and then you'd have yourself probably a better flying glider. Very cool. Very cool. Great. Uh, Lucas, do you have any questions there? Uh, not really. This is the um, airfoil on the Maker Trainer. So you can kind of oh, see cool. the curve on it. Very cool. You yeah. should tell us about your Maker Trainer. Uh, well, this is the Maker Trainer. It's a RC yeah. plane that um, there's PDF plans for, for the series that we're building. Um, there's the hatch right. and a bunch of electronics inside of it. Very uh, good. It, yeah, it has a folding wing, too. So it's see that seam right there? You can't, can't see it there. 
right here, the whole wing folds back and tucks under the fuselage, so easy transport. Very cool. Very yep. cool. Great, Breck. Well, thanks for uh, sharing that project with us. It was a really interesting and educational piece there you got. Um, great. So, Lucas, uh, you're doing a video series, right? It's yep. called Maker Hanger. Uh -huh. uh, so you it's a series you want to tell us how long it is and when it's airing yeah it's a 15 episode series um, the first episode is already on the YouTube page it should be coming up on um, the blog uh, today or no Thursday yeah Thursday <laughs> and um, it's coming out Tuesdays and Thursdays for uh, for 15 episodes and wow. I'll be going okay. over like what all the um, components are, how they work, and how you classify them with the numbers, and then also getting up to how to build the maker trainer and then going out to fly. Great, cool. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your background? I, under I understand you have uh, a yeah. quite a bit of experience with RC airplanes. Yeah, I started about when I was nine. Um, my parents got me an Avastar uh, gas trainer, and it had a six-foot wingspan, I think, uh, wow. 40cc gas engine on it big plane. Um, because it was so big yeah. and heavy, it flew really well, but um, it was pretty hard to set up. So I did that for a little while, but then I kind of dropped it because of my schedule. I had Boy Scouts and other things to do. But then a couple years ago, about four or five years ago, I got back into RC with electric planes, and I started doing scratch builds and other things like that, and it was really fun. So that's what I'm doing now. Cool. Great. So uh, how long have you been flying there? Um, about four to five years. Yeah. Four to five years. Cool. Did you crash a lot? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you're going to crash if you fly RC planes, but um, right. it's a learning experience, and failure is always something that you learn from. Definitely. Um, mm -hmm. so don't be scared to crash is the basic no. idea here. Don't yeah. be scared to to break your experiments. Just keep trying, and you know, pay attention to how you uh, modify your plane and how it affects the flight. You know? Yeah, and I explained that in the videos, like build the first one that looks like terrible. Uh, you just threw it together really quickly, so you don't really care about it. Um, this one's all nice and covered and colored and all that. Um, but you build the first one really bad, and then you crash a whole bunch, see what's wrong, modify it, and then you get to the point where you know what you're doing, so then you build a much better one. Right, right, cool. Um, so do you fly quadcopters? Yes, I do. Ooh, cool. Yeah, that I happens. have um, an aerial videography company, too. Uh, wow, that's that's kind of how I make money. Um, yeah, it's called Top View Aerials. Very cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, would you recommend any starter kits for electric planes for people? Um, there's a couple that are good. Um, now, I'd obviously say the Maker Trainer is really good because it comes with right. a bunch of parts that are compatible with other parts, and you can use them as you progress, but um, there's a couple other ones that, like, Dynam makes a Hawk Sky. That one's pretty good. It's like $100, but you can't really use all the parts off of it, so, right. um, so wh there's a couple others. Where would we find plans for your Maker Trainer? Well, those will be coming out when the Build Series comes out. They'll be in cool. the description when those videos start coming out. Gotcha. But um, the introductory video, you can already start ordering the parts for it, so uh, you can... Uh, have those parts come in before, and then you have the parts in by the time that you start building your plane. Gotcha. Very cool. Uh, counselors, do we have any questions? Uh, no, no questions. Okay, cool. Hey, Lucas, um, so you mentioned that before you really hop on the, the controls for an RC plane, you might want to try a simulator. Yes. So, um, are there any open source simulators or free of cost simulators, maybe for an iPhone or Android? Yeah, there's a couple simulators that you can get. Um, of course, the computer ones are going to be the best because they actually have an RC controller. Um, I do have a couple of them for the iPhone. There's one called Absolute RC. It's free with one plane, and it, it works pretty well. Um, it, all the control layouts are the same as a normal RC uh, transmitter, but and then the physics are pretty good too. But it's on a smaller screen, and you don't really have the real sticks. So, gotcha. if you gotcha. can buy it, which um, Hobby King comes out with one uh, RC simulator for your computer that's like fifteen dollars. If you can get that, that would be the best. Yeah, that sounds pretty good for the price. 
Um, so I understand you have a pretty popular YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, um, Busy BTV. Uh, that's my YouTube channel. We do uh, reviews, scratch builds, how tos, and other things, uh, awesome. fixing stuff. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, um, I think we're going to hand it off to the counselors. We've got a a project that they're going to share with us. Uh, Nick Thanks, and Rahid. Yeah. Thanks. So uh, I'm Nick, and this is Rahid. I'm Rahid, and, and we have two awesome projects for you today. The instructions are online; you can find them there. Uh, Very we're cool. going to quickly talk about both and show you the final project. Yeah. Awesome. So the first one is a easy blimp here. Balloon blimp. Easy balloon blimp. You can show it up. Very cool. Yeah. And the second one is a folding glider. Oh, cool. The wings fold out. You can yep. make it yourself. Yeah, I love that project. That's great. Cool. All right, let's get started, yeah? So this one here, um, it's very simple. Uh, it just has a helium balloon on top and then uh, taped to a straw. And within that straw is a smaller straw that goes down and out this way. Then there's a balloon taped really well here so that no air can get out. And to weight it down so that it just hovers just perfectly, we added modeling clay here. So you can take it off and put it on as you need more to make the balloon float higher or lower. Awesome. So here's what it does. Cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's great. Very yeah. cool. Cool. Thanks. And what's the what's sec the second project you've got there? So the second project is a folding glider. As Brett explained, it's it, you have to find the uh, balance point. Right. I mean, you don't have to find the balance point because it's a kit already built. So you can find that ascent is put here to make the uh, balance point perfect for the glider. Cool. And you can launch it with a rubber band in the front. How high does it go? It goes pretty high. It's yeah. fast as well. Like 20 feet so, the, you can, so the wings fold up so it can climb high, and they expand to glide. Yeah, after you launch it, it will... Oh, wow, nice. Very yeah. cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, is, so you, can, you just use a rubber band, shoot it up in the air. How far does it go? How high? How high does it go? Probably like 20 feet, about. Right, yeah. cool. Cool. Uh, then, is there any way you can kind of trick that out to make it shoot higher? Well, um, we attached some rockets to it, and that made it go go a little bit okay. higher. Yeah, <laughs> it also sure. burned it. That was another problem. It caught on yeah. fire, but it, it definitely went farther than it would have before. It's very so, cool. Yeah, I think there's there's actually a make project. Uh, I, f I forgot the name of it currently, but there's a it's a, a tripod looking situation, and uh, it's got quite a few rubber bands, so you can shoot it up about 300 feet. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you could just keep linking rubber band after rubber band and have a longer thing and make it stronger. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, uh, I think that about wraps it up for day two of Maker Camp. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining. Uh, Breck and Andrew, thanks for joining and uh, teaching us about uh, your gliders. Yeah, thank you. No problem. And it was a lot of fun. Thanks to Google awesome. for letting the shooter here in their offices. Yeah, great. Uh, and your website, Breck? It's uh, Brooklyn Aerodrome, one word. Aerodrome, old timey spelling of airport.com. Very and, cool. Uh, there's uh, all the information you need is there for how to build these airplanes. And, uh, and we've taught a lot of people how to fly on the flak as well. So it's not a bad beginner um, plane, believe it or not. It takes crash damage incredibly well. Right. The airplane I showed you had been thrown around a bunch by kids just learning how to fly. So. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, we'll see you, Breck, and Andrew in New York at the New York Maker Fair, right? Of course. Awesome. Great. I'll talk to you guys soon. And Lucas, so you're starting a Maker Hangout series, right? Can we talk about that really quick? It's a 15-part series, and you're going to mm -hmm. teach us how to build an electric trainer, right? Yep. Cool. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a show on Make awesome. YouTube so page. It launches, it launches on Thursday on yep. makezine.com forward slash makerhanger. Uh, and it's going to air every Tuesday and Thursday through August 29th. 
Uh, so yeah, Lucas is going to teach us how to build a really cool electric trainer. So we'll have to look forward to that. Um, yeah. All right. I think that about wraps it up. Oh, is that the trainer there? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Cool. The maker trainer. Uh, nice. Uh, how long can it fly for? Um, with the with a decent sized battery, just to have one that it weighs it out. About 20 minutes, but you wow. get tired after that, so you don't fly it for that long. All right. Cool. All right, well, we look forward to that series, and I want to thank everybody for joining us, uh, Breck, Andrew, Lucas, Rahid, and Nick. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow for Maker Camp Day 3. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. See you. Bye.